beautiful people, welcome back. You guys, I am super excited for this video. I hope you guys are all having a great day. And in today's video, we're gonna be testing out some new makeup. I don't have a full face by any stretch of the imagination, but I do have some really key products that I'm excited to test out. Stuff that I've already talked about a ton. We've got the new Morphe foundation. We have the new Benefit setting spray, which y'all, I literally, <laughs> I literally squealed when they sent that over. I was over on Instagram when I like did the unboxing and stuff. And so we're gonna test that out. I've got the new primer I was talking about from It Cosmetics. I have the new lip liner um, from Beauty Bakery, the new Make It Big Mascara from Morphe, just a couple of other new things that have kind of crept into my collection over the last couple of weeks. And I'm actually a little extra excited for this video because what I'm gonna do is go through and on some of the other items that I don't have anything new for, I'm actually gonna be substituting in products that are older in my collection, stuff that for whatever reason I just haven't tried lately. And I thought it would be cool to test them out, see, you know, do I like them, have my opinions changed, like where do I sit with it now? And then maybe try to, you know, use up those products. That way I'm not just constantly reaching for the same old, same old, you know, over and over again. But that is pretty much the scope of today's video. I don't have anything else, um, you know, that's super pressing. I really just wanted to do a video where I could like sit, chit chat, test some new makeup, but also hang out with you guys and just have it be more of a relaxed video. So I hope that you guys like this. And then of course, while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your post notifications because I do upload um, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, usually right around 7, 7.30 ish AM, my time here in good old Northern Michigan. And then also too, while you're at it, please click the link down in the bio and go follow me over on Instagram. Not only am I trying to grow that platform, which you guys know this, I'm trying to hit 10,000 followers, but I am also very, very active over there. That's where I hang out in the Insta stories. We do unboxings, we do polls. Um, we just, I, I feel like that's just where we talk about everything. And then of course I do post a ton as well in the feed. So if you're looking for anything plus size fashion, makeup, you know, testing new launches, hell, just getting ready with me, is anything like that. I do post, like I said, a ton over there. So make sure you follow me again. Everything will be linked. But from there, I don't have anything else to say. So let's go ahead and zoom the camera in and let's get started. Guys, so we're good and zoomed in. I got my hair clipped back and we're going to lead in with this primer from It Cosmetics. And this primer, I have been so excited to try this. I talked about it in um, a purchaser pass that I put up maybe two-ish weeks ago. I'll link it up here if you want to check it out. But uh, this is their new Your Skin But Better primer. And according to the back of the box here, it says that this is an oil-free makeup gripping base that will hydrate your skin while extending the wear of your makeup. And it is a skin transforming primer that will help to refine the look of your pores over time, creating a more even and flawless base. All right, so just taking that and pressing it into the skin, the primer itself, I need a little bit more over here. Um, the primer itself is just like a white, you know, kind of clear texture. It doesn't really have much of a, um, much of a presence on your skin once it settles in. Looking at my skin up close with that primer, I'm not noticing a huge difference. I would say right through here, my pores look a little bit softer, but they don't look like overly blurred or anything like that. And the primer itself actually just kind of sank right into my skin, which is very interesting. And it doesn't feel like super, you know, grippy or tacky or anything like that on the surface, which I actually like. Um, for me with primers like this, I find that the more like sticky tacky they are, the more that they actually interfere and make my makeup not last as long, um, just because I naturally have so much surface texture. But this actually feels pretty good. All right, now from there, we are gonna dive into this Morphe foundation. This is their new Filter Effect Soft Focus Foundation for medium to full coverage. And I have it in the shade Filter Light 6. And then to go with that, I did pick up an already wet, their new Microfiber Beauty Sponge. And this is um, actually one of those sponges that has like that fleecy kind of coating on it, which if you're not familiar with those, it's actually designed to not only give you a more smooth application, but it's also supposed to help preserve the coverage by keeping the foundation on the surface of the sponge instead of it soaking in. So it'll be interesting to see. I actually really like this shape. I love that it kind of comes to this little point right here for like cutting in, you know, down your nose, up under your eye. Obviously I haven't tested it. So, so far the shape of it's the only thing I can comment on, but uh, so far so good. I like that it has a good squish to it. Like it still feels very, you know, spongy as it were. So I'm interested with this one to see if it really is like a nice hybrid between the two. So obviously, like I said, we're going to be testing that out, but I want to get into some of the claims with this foundation. It says that this is a long wearing oil free natural finish foundation that hydrates the skin and blurs imperfections for the ultimate soft focus look. It is infused with hyaluronic acid, which is a skin smoothing moisture booster, vitamin E, a powerful antioxidant, and glycerin, a hydrator for a healthy looking glow. And then as far as the amount of product, it looks like you get 0.94 fluid ounces. Packaging is actually really beautiful. Very classic Morphe black cap. It has a pump. I like the pump. It's actually a 
nice one. It actually says on the bottom here, this is made in Italy. Fun fact. So I'm going to start off with this much foundation and start working it over my red area right here just so we can, you know, see the actual coverage. How is this shade? Oh yeah, this, this is a little bit too yellow for me, but we'll make it work. Okay, so, so far, I just went ahead and worked that foundation, that little bit here, mainly in this quadrant, just so I could, you know, get a feel for the texture. And I like that when I'm applying it, it does feel a little bit more hydrating and more lightweight, but I also notice that the, um, the actual spread of it doesn't seem to go very far. So I think, you know, you might need what seems like a little bit more of this foundation to really cover your face. All right, so I'm just gonna go in now and start doing the other side. Um, I was going to test out a brush with this. They have this new brush. It actually came free with the foundation when I bought it, but this is their new, um, what is this? E E63. And it's supposed to be like a flat, one of these type brushes and stuff like this doesn't really work for me. So I kind of held it back. Um, you know, just in case I hated the sponge, but so far <laughs> I'm actually liking the sponge. So I'd rather stick with it. And as far as the sponge goes, I actually think it is moving the product around really, really nicely. All right. So two things I want to get into. Number one, I'm going to take a teeny amount of foundation just to see if this is a buildable uh, a buildable formula from medium to full and I'm gonna try building it right on this area just to see if you actually can cover a little bit more of that redness. Okay, so after doing that, I would say if you're someone like me and you have more intense, like, you know, hyperpigmentation, more acne, any any sort of redness like that on the surface of your skin, this will give you more of like a medium to full medium. It's not gonna get you all the way to full. Like I have some darkness right here that's just not covering. But if you don't have issues like that on the surface of your skin, like stuff that's more intensely red, I actually think that this would give you more of a robust full coverage appearance because it it does a really nice job over like lighter hyperpigmentation around the nose and stuff like that. All right, so if you're new here, and that was probably a very abrupt close up, but I like to, anytime I'm working with a new foundation, um, give you guys a good close up so you can really see how it sets into the skin, texture, and all of that. And with this foundation, let me try to stop. Let me try to stop moving my mouth for a second. Um, with this foundation, what I'm noticing more than anything right off the bat is that right up here, like around my nose, the porous areas on my cheeks, is that it's almost settling in, which isn't my favorite. Like it's like almost like the color from the foundation, the actual pigment is uh, like receding into my pores. And I'm not in love with that necessarily, but it's also not a game changer for me either because I'm pretty much used to it at this point. Again, especially over this area, my nose, like those areas are always really difficult for me. But over the rest of the face, like my cheeks and whatnot. It actually looks pretty good. I love that it gives more of a kind of like a lit from within kind of look. It's not super glowy. Uh, I would say it's more of a, like it described itself a natural kind of glow, which I really like. And even up on the forehead, like everything just spread out very evenly. I like it. You can still see my redness, hyperpigmentation and all of that peeking through, but it's definitely, I mean, it's, it's not bad at all so far. It has, you know, a nice natural look to it. Very, very, very close to everything that they're promising. The only thing I'm noticing is the poor situation, which again, that's, that's just a me thing. Um, but so far so good. All right. So next up, I'm actually pulling this one out of retirement. This is the Zoeva authentic concealer. And I haven't used this in a hot minute. I have it in the shade zero one zero absolute so far. So good on this uh, concealer. It actually looks really nice. It's spreading beautifully and I am really, really liking this sponge. And honestly, it could be the sponge that's helping it spread because it does have that microfiber situation, but it feels really good so far. Now I do just want to add on something and it's not th this sponge specifically. So I just want to make that clear because this sponge um, for being a microfiber is probably my favorite that I've ever used to date. Like the, the squish on this is wonderful, but I am noticing as I do with all microfibers that right through here, like along the tops of my cheeks where my texture is the worst, um, sponges like this do make me look a little bit heavier in the foundation department. Like they, they just look a little thicker. And so I am going to take just a regular sponge here. This is one I already took uh, and I have have wet from before I started filming and I want to see if I can just press it in a little bit more and I'll kind of show you guys what I'm talking about because when I go in with just a regular sponge, yeah, you're gonna see, well, I don't, yeah, actually it shows up on camera. There is a fair amount that's coming off. But what ends up happening is that this little bit of product, even though, you know, on a sponge, it doesn't look like a ton, um, it ends up sitting really, really heavily just because I do have so much texture and pour and all of that stuff. Okay, so I definitely think the sponge was the right decision here because I'm still having the issue um, with the pores where it's looking a little bit funky, like all along here, which that's not gonna change. After I powder and all of that, I'll have a better read on it. But for where it's at right now, it does look pretty okay. Like, I'd give it a solid... 
mm, like a B, B minus, you know, for overall complexion, just because I'm not loving that settle and I don't like how it looks on my upper lip. But uh, going in and removing that, like that excess definitely helped a lot. Now under the eyes, I am adding just a little bit more coverage because I'm noticing that this area, like right up in my under eye little bag right there, y'all know I got these big ass under eye crevasses and they're like six feet deep, okay? I, I just stuff all my baggage into there. And I'm noticing that these little bags are really eaten up this concealer. Like it's, it's having a hard time like staying on the surface of my skin. And that could just be, you know, with the concealer that it has more of a hydrating glow to it. But I do really like the glow of that concealer. I think under my eyes, it actually looks really pretty. So I'm just going to go ahead here, pat it out one extra time. And then from there, I'm going to go in and actually use something I've been using a lot just for a control variable. This is the one size setting powder here. And I'm just going to take and really press that in on both sides and then go ahead and set the under eyes and the t-zone as well now really quick too before i set my face which i'm going to use the fenty pro matte uh, foundation powder here this is in the shade 150 because uh, i obviously i'm combo leaning oily if you're new so i set my entire face but for those of you that don't um just to give you a little bit of intel here i would say this foundation yeah like i'm definitely getting a fair amount of transfer so if you're on the fence like me you probably will have to set it but uh so far it's looking pretty good it has like a light tack to it like i said for me i'm gonna go ahead and set the rest of the face here very lightly just kind of tapping and pressing this in all right so this one as i set it down I, i'm not really loving it so far because i feel like as i set it it almost became like more heavy on my face like on the surface of my skin if that makes sense and trying to set it down it actually feels like it doesn't want to set like it's it's absorbing that foundation powder all right so from there i decided to move the camera back out because obviously it's super dark outside it's really rainy today and i'm trying to you know create as much light as i can in this room but uh from there i want to move on to bronzer and blush and i actually busted this old guy out of my collection this is the jouet champagne and necarons sweet cheek face palette and i'm going to start off by diving into the bronzer here this is in the shade suntan and i'm going to take this on a what is this morphe jh02 it's more of a fluffy style bronzer brush and i'm gonna go in and actually apply this a little bit more delicately because i noticed with this foundation it's not really like setting down intensely so i want to be you know just a little bit mindful that i'm not scooching it all over my face so while i go in with this i'm just gonna start by kind of pressing it in and then lightly blending it out from there that way i still get a nice bronzed look but it's not like you know su super swishy like i normally do okay so i'm not looking at the monitor because i think it's going to enrage me when i see this streak of orange tang on my face but this looks so gorgeous on my skin tone like I'm I'm absolutely obsessed with this bronzer so far so so happy from there I'm gonna dive in to the shade romance me here and I'm just gonna pop that onto the cheeks this is an it cosmetics chic blush brush and I'm gonna start this one a little bit higher pull it down okay so I love the texture of that blush it looks absolutely gorgeous and I love the color and I love that it's like the same exact shade as my shirt this is working well All right now from there I am going to go in with my number seven uh, light illuminating powder and I'm going to use this to lightly shape out the face as per usual I'm going to take and put that oh wow this oh this cut on this sponge oh this is this is good I like this a lot I'm gonna take here, like, look at that line, honey. Oh my gosh, she's so nice, so precise. Nice and precise. Oh, it's my favorite kind of line. Oh, honey, look at them cheekbones. My God, that might be the best my cheekbones have ever looked. Looking so good. All right, now going into brows, I'm using the Urban Decay Inked Brow. This is in the shade Neutral Nana, and I haven't used it in a while. It's just like a kind of a brow gel cream situation. And then I think over top of that, I'll just go ahead and throw in some of my Benefit Gimme Brow in the shade 3.5, just to add that little bit of a fluff factor. All right, so now that the brows are done, I'm just removing any and all of that excess powder that I put on, which did help to lightly shape the face. Now from there, I want to move on and set the rest of my face, which we're actually going to be testing out this new Benefit, the Porefessional Super Setter, which they did send to me in PR. And it says on the back here that this is a multitasking micro fine mist that leaves skin feeling smooth, refreshed, and hydrated. It locks in makeup for 16 hours. It instantly blurs your pores and it feels weightless and absorbs instantly. It says that the secret weapon is the pore blurring powders that softly scatter the light and visibly help to reduce shine. Oh, this is going to be interesting and also by the way i love this color like the, the color the packaging everything about this i just think is so pretty um i'm really into like teals and turquoises lately it's just kind of my thing but let's go ahead let's give it a ooh. 
Yo, very micro fine. You guys see that? Ooh. And then on the scent, it is a very light scent that, that does dissipate quickly, which I like. And I can't get over that mister. It is so fine. Like, I can barely feel it. Wow. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead here. I'm just going to spray the face. Okay, so, so far, I would say with this mist, I agree with most everything it says. Number one, mister is fantastic. Number two, the instant set, like, it, it literally absorbs into your skin the moment it hits because it's so micro fine, and I really like that. Like, I think it gives you a good even set very quickly. Now, the only thing that I don't agree with, and I'm not gonna say it's the spray because, quite frankly, my foundation is not looking good at all. It's looking very dry and very crackly and crevassy, but uh, as far as the instant blurring smoothing situation, I'm definitely not seeing a ton of that like right through here But I do think it looks really good over the surface of my cheek like on the planes of it So that kind of leads me to believe that this is an issue with the foundation and not the spray But so far so good on that it looks nice and it even gives a slight amount of hydration like right in this area Which I'm not mad at now from there I want to go ahead and talk about highlights for a second because I did pick up as a lot of you saw over on Instagram um, I picked up the Jaclyn Hill little mystery vault that she launched and I was super excited I was able to get my hands on the full collection, which was all the lipsticks, the little eye glimmers, and of course these two highlights. And I'm gonna be honest, okay, I've been testing these out for a while and I'm a little bit bummed with these highlighters because out of the two shades, right, this one is the shade Flurries, and Flurries has a beautiful texture. It feels amazing. It's very similar to the texture that you get in her highlight palette. And this formula, y'all, I know you can't get it anymore, which is why I never talk about it, but this is one of the best highlighter formulas I have ever tested. I love the texture the color, just everything is amazing. And uh, this one that I just swatched, the deeper of the two shades, feels a lot like this formula, which I was really excited about. But then from there, I had to go in and I had to look at this shade, right? This is the shade Twinkle, which is the one closer for my skin tone. And I was really, really disappointed because for as beautiful as the other shade looks, the texture and all of that, this one just doesn't work as nicely for some reason. Like it has almost more of a chunk because when you swatch it, it looks really, really beautiful. But then when you swatch it, you get like this kind of a light glimmery situation and the texture of it isn't bad but it definitely doesn't like build and have the same smoothness as the other formula so I was a little bit bummed about that I mean for obvious reasons like if this had the same formula as this one it would work already so much better but the way that I want to show you guys these is how I've been wearing them which is mixing the two together which does help give um, not only a little bit more of a base color to the white shade but it also helps give me a a little bit more of the texture from this one which is just a lot creamier so I like to go in here and just kind of gingerly mix the two together and then lightly buff it in and that way I'm able to get, oh my God, I'm able to get a way nicer highlight. And then I'm just gonna go in here with my blush brush and lightly blend that shade into my blush just so there's not a lot of like harshness to the um, to the highlight. I find that with that white shade, it has to be blended back a little bit. Otherwise it looks just too abrasive. It looks like a stripe on my face. So if I go in and I blend it, it kind of helps reduce that. All right, now from there on the eyes, I'm not really doing anything super intense. I pulled out this uh, single shade here. This is from Tom Ford and this is their Emotion Proof Eye Color. It's in the shade 04 Brute Rose and it's a really, really um, light, kind of a pinky taupey color. I'll go ahead and swatch it next to those highlights so you can kind of see it. Uh, it's this one right here, and I noticed the other day, this was just sitting in my collection, and I'm not going to apply, like, any additional concealer or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and blend out uh, what I already have there and apply it with my finger, but I noticed this sitting in my collection the other day, and uh, stuff like this I'm just so into right now, and I was like, why the hell haven't I been playing with this? Like, why haven't I given it another try? Because the last time I tried it, um, I didn't really love it. Like, it just, it didn't work with my makeup and the base that I had applied. So I figured we would give it another shot just as a, a little wash of color. Like you can see it doesn't really add a ton, just a light little taupey pink. But the shade, like the sheen of it is really, really pretty. I think what I like about this the most, I mean, obviously I love that nice little wash, but I really like the texture. Cause it just, like it sits down so seamlessly, but it's a really thin feeling. So when you blend it all over your eyelid, it just, it moves around effortlessly. Now I am just taking a teeny tiny little bit of it on the tip of my finger as well and kind of patting it into my lower lash line right there just for that same little wash of color. It's not really gonna add much, but it's just a little bit of something sparkly. And I actually really like the look of that on my lower lash line. It has such a dainty, 
like kind of like a Bambi eye to it. I like that. Okay, so I have my eyes done, but guys, is this swatch not so satisfying? I was just sitting here, obviously I finished up my eyes and I had the leftover on my finger and I wiped it on my hand and I just think that that looks so, <laughs> so gorgeous. It was, it was an accidental swatch, if and you will, but I don't wanna let it go to waste because I think it's so beautiful. All right, so from here, before I finish up the eyes with my mascara, I wanna set the face one more time with my Catrice Dewy Glow Setting Spray, um, which I use this every day, but I'm really hoping that with this current state of affairs, especially around my mouth right here, this foundation looks atrocious on me. Uh, I'm really hoping that this will help kind of uh, <laughs> make it look better. So let's take a little hit. All right, now from here, we're moving on to mascara. I'm gonna be testing out two different things. First of all, the Morphe Make It Big Volumizing Mascara and the Tweezer Man um, Eyelash Curler. This has been so, so recommended from you all. This is their, just their original one. I actually, did I mention this in a video yet? Video or Instagram somewhere, I talked about it uh, because I've had so many of you leave me comment after comment that this is like the best lash curler you've ever used. So I figured we would give it a little go. It's just your standard little run-of-the-mill guy here. All right, so, so far with this one, I do like it. Um, I like that it actually gives me a pretty nice curl. It's not uncomfortable. The actual shape of the, um, the curler itself is really, really nice. I like it because it's not pinching my lashes. Like it has enough room for uh, multiple eye shapes. Okay, so from there, we're gonna go into the Morphe mascara. I love this packaging. The writing detail right here is gorgeous. This matte black, absolutely stunning. And oh, the actual wand is a little bit goopy. It has more of a, um, like a thicker, more volumizing wand, which I do love. I've talked about that a ton. Covered in bristles, which is great, but I don't necessarily love how like thin this feels. It's more of a wet formula, I guess you'd say, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start building it up. I'll catch you guys on the flip side here after I built up a couple of coats and we will go from there. Okay, you know what? That's actually not so bad. <laughs> I love that I'm like, I'll catch you guys after I built up some coats. Just kidding. Let me keep talking. But uh, yeah, oh yeah, the formula is definitely wet. Be mindful of uh, blinking too fast, like putting your eyes down because it will definitely transfer a little bit. But so far, even though it's like a wet formula, it's actually applying pretty well. Huh, not too bad. And I like how black the formula is. All right, so, so far, now that I've applied a couple of coats of this, I would say I'm kind of in between because I don't love that texture, like that wet, goopy situation I was talking about with it, but I don't hate the way that it builds up. So I think with this one, what's gonna be key is letting it dry down a little bit in between. Like I was actually taking, I applied my first layer and then I did some of this, let it dry down a little bit more than I usually would because this is wetter than normal. And I think that that made a big difference really getting it to look a little bit more voluminous, at least for me. So, so far I'm not mad at it. I like the bristles. I don't like the texture. Like I'm kind of back and forth on a lot, but so far it's not bad. It's, I'm, I'm very hesitant. And you know what too, this might be one of those mascaras that as you use it over time, like as you um, open it and introduce air into it, that might help kind of thicken it up a little bit. And you know what? I really can't say anything bad because as I look at my lashes, they actually look pretty good. Like they have a nice individualized, they got a little volume. In some cases, they they do look a little bit spidery for me, but not too shabby. All right, now from there, we're going in to my final new product, which is actually from Beauty Bakery. This is their Sugar Stick Lip Liner, and I am so excited, you guys. I have been obsessed with this since the moment I saw the packaging. I have this in the shade Creme de la Crumb, which, oh my God, you guys, their packaging, their names, everything about them. Oh, I just love it. Okay, so are you kidding me with this packaging? Like, this is everything. You take it off. This is the cap, and then it's actually a twist up lip liner. And by the way, this is the kind of cap, if you're a crafter like myself, you, I will so keep this and use it either as like a drawer pull or a knob on something. I don't care. Okay. I'm going to keep this and use it for something because this is so nice. It's like heavy glass or plastic or something. Y'all, this thing is like hefty as hell. Uh, but let's go ahead. I want to swatch. Ooh, it's a very warm tone, kind of terracotta brown. Very nice. I actually really like that shade. So I'm just going to go ahead and start shaping out the lips. Okay, so for this one, I am filling in the majority of my lip. I have my bottom lip filled in right now. And this color, I actually, once it's on and applied, it looks much more mauve toned than it did when I swatched it which is really interesting. I don't know if it's just reacting to like my natural lip color or what, but that is very, <laughs> very different than I'm used to. But I still really like the color. And then because that lip liner does come off a little bit more 
on the mauve side once applied, I decided to pair it with a little bit of the Fenty Gloss Cream. Is that what this is called? Yeah, Gloss Cream. And this is in 01 Mauve Wives. And by the way, this combo is absolutely stunning like the two mixed together is just perfection and i'll write you guys with that of course the full face is done this is how everything came together and i want to run through give you guys some of my final thoughts so i'm going to go ahead actually and throw up the up close that way you guys can take a look and see how things are looking a little bit closer and for me i think i'm going to go ahead actually and start off with complexion because i don't know how well you guys can see it on camera i was having a really hard time because it's dark my for some reason my balance is off on my camera but i'm having a really hard time showing you guys how awful, <laughs> if I'm being honest, how awful this foundation looks. Like, there's a huge issue um, around my mouth. It's, like, really cracky and dry looking. And I'm having a similar issue on the laugh lines around my mouth, up on the sides of my nose, and even a little bit along my jawline. And I've talked about this with other foundations, so I'm not, like, super mad about it. But with this one specifically, I noticed when I went to set it with my foundation powder, my Fenty powder, that it didn't really want to set down. Like, it, it was kind of absorbing, and I might have even said this, that it was kind of absorbing that foundation powder. And what I find is that when I'm working with a foundation like that, um, a lot of times they don't really look great on my skin with setting powder because more often than not, like they're just not designed to be set down. Then they, they don't look as good when you try to mattify them, which of course is what I have to do because my skin is combo leaning oily. So for me, this isn't really a foundation I would reach for because again, it's more of a textural issue when being sat down. But I think that the foundation itself did have good qualities. It's just not something that really works great on my skin. From there, I do want to talk about a couple of other things because, of course, the foundation is messing with some stuff, obviously. But I am really excited to try the primer and that setting spray again to see if, you know, obviously with a foundation that I already know and love, if those work a little bit better. But so far, I love the texture of both and I love that, you know, I'm already seeing kind of what they're supposed to be doing. But just, again, with this foundation, I don't think it's really working all that great. And that actually leads me to this other guy I wanted to mention from Urban Decay. This is that inked brow. And I seriously think that this is such an underrated product because every time I use it, my brows look so good. Like they have such a nice amount of definition and just the overall look and the texture of this product is such an interesting hybrid between, it, it's kind of like a, like a brow gel mixed with a pomade. Like it has the color that you can build, you can work it in as color. Or if you wanted to work it through just your brow hair and give them that rigidity, this also will really freeze your hair in place, help it look lifted and nice and fluffy. So this product for me is a win and I just, I wanted to give it a mention because I feel like for as much as I use it on camera, I never actually talk, talk to you much about it. And the product itself is actually really nice. I love the way that it looks. It stays really, really nicely. And uh, yeah, I'll keep using this. I need, I need to pull this to the front of my collection and use it some more because I really, really like it. But from there, you guys, that is it for me. I want to hear from you all down below now. What do you think about what I tested? Have you tried it? What do you think? Um, also, did you try this Morphe foundation and did it do the same thing to you? Do you like it? And if you like it or don't like it, make sure you leave your skin type because I want to know, like, is it just a, you know, combo leaning oily if you set your face kind of thing or like what, what's the general consensus? Again, leave all of your thoughts and opinions down below. And then of course, like I said at the start of the video, you guys can subscribe, turn on your post notifications, follow me on Instagram. Everything will be linked down below, makeup included. And I thank you guys all so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Here, like, look at that line, honey. Oh my gosh, she's so nice, so precise. Nice and precise. Oh, it's my favorite kind of line. A nice and precise one. Paige, how many times can you say nice and precise? Bitch, a lot, okay? Don't tempt me. It is nice and precise and precise and nice because precise is nice. Ooh. I was really starting to lose it on the chorus. I can't find my lid. Where's my lid? Right there. I found it. I found it. Let's get down. Let's get down. Let's get down to business. Okay, let's, let's not get down to that kind of business, ma'am.